Hello, good evening, and welcome. I'm Simon Bestwick uh, from the No Darkness But Ours podcast, and I'm just here to give you guys a quick heads up about some of the excellent stuff we've got for our subscribers um, over on the Patreon page or on the subscribers only section of our Spotify or Anchor accounts. Um, first of all, we've just completed a three-part discussion about Ben Wheatley's folk horror film In the Earth. Now, this was actually made and set during the, the COVID-19 pandemic, and it's an extraordinary piece of folk horror that goes deep into the woods, deep into the psyche. Um, it's a great companion piece to Wheatley's earlier film, A Field in England. Uh, both Gemma and I absolutely loved it, and so when we, first, when, we first, when we first came up with the idea of finding a film to do a kind of a deep dive discussion on, In the Earth was the first one that came to mind. Here's a quick sample of what you're in for. So we begin with In the Earth with Martin, um, a scientist who uh, has come from the city. Uh, he's, uh, he's lost both his parents to, the, to, to COVID. Um, and, you know, he, he is uh, very tall, <laughs> very gentle, um, multiracial guy. Uh, who's right. yeah, he was in Game of Thrones as well. And, uh... Yeah, right. I remember that. Yeah, and um, I... playing a completely different character. <laughs> yes, I and think he's an to... actor. <laughs> I think his character has got to be one of the most brutalized protagon male protagonists I've yes. seen in the film in quite some time. Um, he really does get pulled through the mill, and he's very much not your sort of. He's he's not um, a conventional male protagonist in the sense that he's not he's certainly not he's not tough or stoical no um, not at he, all he, scre he, he, he screams and sobs just as much as you or i probably would if we'd had our feet sliced open or our toes amputated or yeah uh, and, and, and he's cauterized he's, <laughs> he's polite and he's open and he's you know he's like he's the kind of guy who's like oh no oh can we not do that can we not do that <laughs> <laughs> as someone preparing to do something absolutely <laughs> terrible to them, you know, um, and, uh, you know, so he's extraordinarily lucky that when he comes to the woods um, to try and find, try and find and hook up with this, uh, this doctor that he's worked with before. Olivia Wendell. Probably. Olivia Wendell, yeah. Um, who is out in the woods doing some kind of thing nobody's entirely sure about. The you mycorrhiza, know, the, 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 this, the, this being the, the network of fungal yes. filaments that connect that connect up the trees, that connect up the whole this whole ecosystem. Yes. Um, and she, she says that she's uh, her original thesis, I think, was that she was going to try and um, figure out how to make crops grow faster. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but she's gone out to the woods and she's become completely in love with this whole mycological network. Um, yeah. I mean, it struck me one thing that's that I that I, and I don't know if, uh, um, one thing I was reminded slightly of was of Rye Hope in Robert Holstock's Mythago Wood, in mm. the sense that you've got this you've got this space which, in terms of it, which are, on one hand is it is very finite. Its boundaries, external boundaries, are very well known and mapped out. Yeah. But as you progress into it, mm. then those certainties shift. And you're crossing, and you're again. It's a whole thing of yeah. crossing barriers, cross, stepping over thresholds, crossing that, boundaries, and that we that we often talk about here. Um, and you're and getting yeah, into this. yeah, the the wood is like a place to itself. You know, um, mm -hmm. there's a wonderful uh, there's a wonderful poem by Henry Treis, uh, um, the the magic wood, um, where the repeated the repeated refrain is, "You must not go to the wood at night." The wood is full of tiny cries. The wood is full of creeping things. The wood is full of fiery eyes. You must not go to the wood at night. Ooh, and nice. yeah, and this this is very much that kind of wood. And to hear the rest of that podcast, you can go over to our, our Patreon page and sign up as a as a patron or super patron, um, or you can go over to uh, Anchor or Spotify and subscribe to the to our podcast for the audio. For the audio version links to both in the description below we hope we'll see you there and uh the latest our latest of our regular podcast uh 
which is a, study, a four-part study of lesbian horror. The second part of that is just out today. And from tomorrow you can hear the first part of a new three-part discussion for our subscribers only. And this one is a discussion of another classic of folk horror that we both love, which is David Rickon's Pender's Fen. A weird, beautiful, visionary uh, story. It's a, it's a brilliant film. Absolutely amazing work that everyone should see. Uh, or see again, if you've watched it before, because there is just so much going on in it. That's all for now, and so I'll see you again along with Gemma in our next podcast. Until then, I've been Simon Bestwick, and this has been a little teaser of what awaits you in no darkness but ours.